So strange scientists flipped it upside down. And yet, it helped rule the seafloor. We descend through hazy Cambrian light toward a forest of matte spines and drifting silt, listening for quiet power beneath the dust. Imagine a creature smaller than your fingertip shaping traffic across microbial carpets with patient, granular precision. Not a terror with jaws, but a soft-bodied engineer redirecting energy like groundwater under ancient mats. How does something paperclip length influence worlds measured in continents and eons without roaring once? The Cambrian seafloor was a living carpet of microbial films and detrital snow, constantly renewing. Trilobites polished sediment like armored rumbas, while plumes billowed into green, diffuse underwater daylight. Energy flowed sideways here, grazed along surfaces, not chased in dramatic bursts through open water. If power is persistence multiplied by presence, who truly wears the crown down here? When Hallucigenia first emerged from Burgess Shale, its geometry mocked our expectations and patience. Early reconstructions flipped it, planting spines downward and legs skyward with a misplaced phantom head. Legs became spikes, a false face appeared where no mouth truly belonged at all. Confusion made it a punchline hiding a modest grazer behind avant-garde anatomical theatre. What influence vanishes when a body plan is read from the wrong end entirely? The true head sits small and forward, with a neat ring of tooth-like elements for grazing. Beneath the body, soft lobopodian limbs anchor steadily, with delicate twin claws on slippery films. Hallucigenia has seven pairs of legs, 14 terminal claws. Above, a picket of rigid matte spines rises like a portable palisade against danger. Its dorsal spines are defensive, not walking limbs. Picture, fingertip breadth terrain patrolled by a paperclip length fortress, bristling yet strangely elegant and calm. Those claws pinch the microbial nap while the mouth sips crumbs in unhurried rhythm. Mini recap, small head, with a subtle tooth ring, 14 claws below, spines above, grazing, fortified. Abundance across mats meant constant biofilm processing, smoothing shocks after trilobites ruffled sedimentary quilts. Spines nudged predators toward easier, softer meals, changing risk calculations before any strike occurred. Distributed populations multiplied tiny choices into macro-scale routing of nutrients across the benthos. Its quiet rule came from numbers, resilience and evolutionary experimentation, not size or predation. Down here, rulership meant staying put, filtering steadily and prototyping futures others would later perfect. Isn't a chorus of many more enduring than the aria of one spectacular soloist? Hallucigenia likely fed on particles and films, gleaned from currents and settling haze between grains. Spines served as low-cost armor, always on, never draining energy with chases or displays. Each step's twin claws bridged slick gaps while silt drifted like underwater weather around them. Disturb a patch, and they recolonized. The corridor re-knit and quiet function returned quickly. In a world of plumes and shadows, doesn't reliability become the strongest possible shield? Place Hallucigenia near the base of Panathropods, cousin to velvet worms and tardigrades by heritage. Lobopodian legs, twin claws and mouth armature foreshadowed features later refined by arthropod dynasties. Think scaffold phase, where evolution drafts options before building jointed powerhouses to roam future seas. Not a throne of teeth, but an infrastructure of ideas whispering forward through time. Mini recap, stem panathropod, experimental traits, scaffolding influence, less crown, more blueprint library for life. 
Myth, it had 12 legs. Reality, Hallucigenia has seven pairs of legs, 14 terminal claws. Myth, it was an apex predator. Reality, a microfeeder on films and particular crumbs, not a hunter of terror. Myth, it was alien to Earth's tree. Reality, a stem panathropod within our evolutionary neighborhood, familiar in outline. Which other Cambrian celebrities will change shape under clearer data and more patient eyes? Picture trilobites funneling sediment, anomalocaridids cruising above, while lobopodians crosshatch the carpet below. Grain of sand moments accumulate into rivers of stability, buffering shocks and quietly feeding neighbors. When shadows pass, spines persuade, not worth it, buying time for grazing and repair. Isn't ecosystem power the sum of stitches, not the sparkle of any single thread? Tiny experiments, scale across populations, can turn micro habits into macro history with astonishing force. Remember, its dorsal spines are defensive, not walking limbs, and defense reshaped predator choices. The fingertip breadth, paperclip length, and 14 claws carried influence far beyond their size. What secrets hide in undiscovered lobopodian sensory arrays, microscopic eyes, and buried variations still waiting? <laughs>